What's up everybody, welcome back to Chill Dad Reviews. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out a gaming laptop. I've been wanting a mid-range affordable gaming laptop for a few years now, and I finally have one, and I can show it to y'all. So in this video, we're gonna be going into all the details and if this is worth your time and money. So stick around and watch this whole video so you can learn all about it. Let's not waste any of your time here. This is the ASUS Tough Gaming F15 FX506H laptop. I purchased this for $749 back in May, so I've been using it weekly more or less, so that way I can give you my full opinion and experience on it, so I got about a full two months worth of use out of it. The unboxing was just like any other laptop. You get your power supply, your power cable, and then the instructions and a bunch of other papers that you don't really need, and of course, the laptop. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Let's quickly go over the specs and ports on this laptop. Everything's mostly gonna be on the left-hand side. You have your power port, you have your ethernet port, you have an HDMI port, you have two USB 3.0 ports, your Thunderbolt port, and a headphone microphone jack. Then the power button is above the keyboard on the top right-hand corner. Above the keyboard in the middle, you have four small LED status lights. This laptop is equipped with a 15.6 inch 1920 by 1080p IPS display with 144 hertz refresh rate. And the display has a maximum of 250 nits brightness. This is an Intel Core i5 11th Gen 6 core processor with a 2.7 gigahertz base clock speed and a 4.5 boost clock speed. 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, 512 gigabyte M2 NVMe SSD. The graphics card is an NVIDIA GeForce 3050 with 4 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM. You have Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, Thunderbolt 4, and Windows 11 Home. Now let's go over the design of the laptop. It's a black graphite with a all plastic shell. It only weighs about five pounds and is pretty lightweight and slim. You shouldn't have any problems traveling with it. There's also plenty of venting happening on the case, so there's plenty of air coming in and out of it. The keyboard is an RGB backlight that can be fully customized. And if you care what the keyboard sounds like, here it is. It's certainly not the sexiest gaming laptop out in the market, but it is mid-range and I'm fine with it, so you can't expect too much for that price range. You do have the ability to expand the storage and RAM, which we will cover later in this video. Now, while I have your attention, don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. I also have two other channels, Chill Dad Gaming and Chill Dad Lifestyle, where I do everything else when I'm not reviewing things. So do me a favor, check out those channels and let's keep this video rolling. Now let's get to the good part. How does this thing perform? How does it game? What can it do? I played and tested a mix of games, some really old, some in between, a little bit newer, and then some even more recent ones. I'm talking about Rainbow Six Siege, High on Life, Diablo 4, and Warzone 2.0. The graphic settings on Rainbow Six Siege were medium high. Rainbow Six Siege played the best. Now playing Diablo 4 and High on Life, I had to cut back on the graphic settings and drop it down to low to medium. You know, turning off a lot of those high graphic settings, I wasn't able to get full medium settings on it, but they were were still playable. I was getting, you know, average 40 to 50 frames per second. You know, there were some dips here and there, but it was still very playable. By far, the worst possible experience was Warzone 2.0. I had to drop everything on low, turn off every single setting. It was very laggy, choppy, cutting in and out and skipping frames. Definitely not playable, and it was the worst experience so far that I had testing a game. Now, while gaming, the CPU temps would range anywhere from 80 to 85 Celsius. I think that's pretty common in normal average temperatures for you know a gaming laptop, especially for long gaming periods. It's going to be able to handle at least 85% of the games out there. You have to remember this is not a high-end gaming laptop. So I was able to play most of those games for several hours without any major hiccups. Everything was smooth and I enjoyed it. If you're interested in benchmarking and numbers and how it compares to other setups, here it is. I'm not really into this type of stuff because for me, I need to use it and throw things at it to see how it really handles. You should also know when you're switching from power 
to battery, it will automatically throttle down the CPU and GPU to preserve the battery. You can easily adjust these settings in the Armory Crate, which is Asus's customization software for their gaming products. It's similar to like IQ. It's not the greatest software. It could definitely use some improvements, but you can get in there and make some customizations. When you're not plugged into power, you're gonna feel the difference. It is gonna bog down a little bit and you're gonna see some frames cutting in and out. It's gonna get a little choppy. When you have it on the full performance, kind of like turbo mode, when it's like blasting on all cylinders, that's when you're gonna get the best performance and you're gonna get the best frames per second. This laptop performs just as well outside of gaming. I was installing applications and browsing the web and had like 20 different things open and I didn't notice it slowing down at all. Now looking under the hood on this laptop, you will have to take out the entire back plate with about 12 screws. It will take a little bit of time. It's not like most laptops where you might have a little window slot where you can pop open for the RAM or storage. Once you get it open, you'll notice a lot of copper and vapor chambers and heat sinks. They put a lot of cooling into this and there's dual 83 fans on each end. Here's what the fans sound like on full blast while you're gaming. I think the display is colorful, it's vibrant, it does its job, so I'm a fan of it. It also has an anti-glare matte finish, which is great for those viewing angles or if you're getting some sunlight in your you know, room. Now I wanna go over the battery life. I was able to get about three hours just running on the battery while gaming only. Obviously that's using you know all of the power this laptop has to offer, so it drains it fairly quickly. I will be honest with you, if you wanna use this on a long flight, uh, yeah, you're gonna have a problem. It's not gonna work for you. It's gonna die within three hours. Hours. I don't think no matter what you're playing on, it's just gonna kill it. Here is the webcam running on the Asus Tough Gaming F15 laptop. It's a 720p webcam, and this is the quality of the audio and video that you can expect. You can see it's a little grainy and blurry as I move my hands. Not the best quality, so you get what you get. And if you're interested in what the speakers sound like, here it is. This is my first Windows 11 OS that I've had the experience with. And if you haven't jumped on the Windows 11 train, it might not be for everybody. I mean, there is some better things and cooler things happening underneath the Windows OS, especially for gaming, but I'm not going into those details, but I will briefly say that I wasn't a fan of how they kind of shove all their Microsoft services and advertisements down your throat. Unfortunately, that's the only thing I didn't like about it. I mean, it looks nicer, has a nice UI and colors and a lot of customization and animation but other than that, I'm not really a fan of them throwing everything down my throat. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up by just going over some of the things I didn't like about this laptop and answering the question on whether or not you should consider this a viable gaming option. I think the first thing is gonna be the battery life on this laptop. I think the battery size is way too small for a gaming laptop. It is barely 4,200 milliamps and most phones now have 4,000, even 5,000. It's a little mind boggling why the battery size is so small for a gaming laptop. I think they would put at least something 6,000, 7,000. I don't know, I'm not an electronic engineer, so I don't know all the specifics on the battery size that this laptop can handle, but battery life is probably the worst part about this. You're not gonna get more than three hours of gaming. It's just gonna drain it out very quickly. So it's one downside of it. You'll have to just accept that if you're looking for an affordable gaming laptop. Second thing is gonna be the RAM, eight gigabytes of DDR4. I don't think it's gonna be enough. Even just running like basic applications and web browsing and all the bloatware and windows, you're gonna be hitting 60 to 75% of utilization on the RAM. If I were you, if you're gonna be interested in this laptop, I would probably consider another RAM stick. The third thing is gonna be the webcam. It's only 720p and just a straight potato. Looks very grainy, doesn't really offer any HD at all. It just seems like the bare minimum. If you plan on using the webcam for any kind of video conferencing, don't plan on getting great quality. Now the real question is, is it worth the $750 price tag? I think that depends on you. If you're willing to accept that it's not gonna be able to handle most of those AAA titles that are you know high fidelity, tons of graphics in it and you know cutting edge technology on the way it looks it's just not going to do a great job on it you're not going to be happy with it if you're okay with not playing those types of games on it then this is definitely for you all those other games that aren't so heavy intensive on the cpu and gpu it's going to handle it just fine you're going to be able to run medium settings you're going to be able to get 40 to 70 frames per second you know just depending on the type of game and what you have set on it it's going to run it smoothly it's going to feel fine you're not going to have you know any major issues you're just going to need to understand this is not a high-end 
gaming laptop. Other than that, in my personal opinion, I'm happy with the purchase. I recommend it if you're not gonna be doing a whole lot of heavy gaming on this, you're not traveling a whole lot, I think it's definitely worth the price tag and worth checking out. I'm also very impressed by the amount of cooling and vents and copper that they put into this laptop. It's definitely gonna help keep everything as cool as possible for those long gaming sessions. If you're interested in learning more about this laptop, I will put the link in the description below. Don't forget to smash that like button. Please consider subscribing and I'll catch you on the next one.